and before I get started, I just wanted to have a quick observation. I have been sitting in the audience for the previous sessions, and I've noticed several speakers have used the word power or powerful in their talks, and I mean, I'm listening for it, so I notice it, but I think it's interesting that the concept of power cuts across so many subjects and genres and ages, because today I want to talk about finding your power. There are so many reasons why people feel powerless. Abuse, crime, victimization, those are the terrible, obvious things that we think of when we think of feeling powerless. But there are other reasons, like poverty, chronic health problems, age. Being old can make people feel powerless. Researchers at the University of Cambridge Department of Psychology very recently conducted a study, and they asked people to answer a series of questions about how powerful they felt in their personal lives, and then they asked them to lift boxes of varying sizes and guess how heavy each box was. And consistently, the people who said that they felt little or no power also guessed that the boxes were heavier than they actually were, which means that when you feel powerless, you feel the weight of the world literally. Life is heavier. First of all, there is no age at which you are too old to find your inner power. And second of all, there are no circumstances so dire that they have robbed you of the ability to find your inner power. I believe this. So a few years ago, I experienced a life transition. I'd had a great, happy career in Washington, D.C. I worked in Congress, I worked in the administration, I ran a federal agency, and I traveled the world meeting with my foreign counterparts. Um, I gave interviews and speeches, I spoke at the UN. And so when I found myself in Connecticut for my husband's career opportunity with no job, I was adrift. And my first month in my new town, I walk into a karate dojo to sign my daughters up for classes. And I'm reading the materials on the wall, newspaper articles and certificates. And I come to learn that the sensei of this particular program had moved to Japan as a young adult, specifically for the purpose of living and training with the experts in Japanese martial arts. And he'd stayed there nearly 10 years, just training. And I thought, oh. This guy's the real deal. So when he came over to me to talk to me about my girls, I said, teach me. I have no idea why I said this. I didn't plan on saying it. It just came out. And I, I mean, to be clear, I have never had any interest in martial arts in my life. Even as a child, I never took a class. No one in my family did. And my best guess now is that I was missing my identity and I was searching for something new. Anyway, he said, no, <laughs> no, I don't teach adults. That's the end, no. Uh, he said, I don't teach adults. Adults are impatient. I teach a traditional Japanese martial arts program. It would take you five years of one-on-one -on -one training with me almost every day, plus hours of practice time here on your own before you could hope to earn a black belt. And he was close. It took me four and a half. <laughs> And after I'd finally earned my black belt, Andrew, uh, my sensei, and I flew to Japan so I could meet his family and get some inspiration. And at dinner one night, his sensei asked me, what did you find interesting about your training? What, what had you liked best? And I said, ki-ai. I liked ki-ai. And a ki-ai is just a shout. It's a yell, it's a Japanese battle cry. But for us, the sound is really only a fraction of the story because when we say find your ki-ai, we really mean find your power. The kanji, ki, means energy. I, uh, the way we use it is harmony, getting in touch with. It's getting in touch with your energy, but really getting in touch with your power. And I want to pause right here and note that it is not a scream. Sometimes when I teach high school girls, they scream like they're auditioning for a horror movie. Oh, 40 of them <laughs> in a gymnasium. A scream comes from the throat. Ah! But a ki-ai 
<sighs> it comes from the belly. It comes from the gut. Why? Well, Japanese martial artists, actually many Japanese, believe that your spirit is located in your center. So your body may be out of balance from time to time, but your spirit never is. And if you want to find your energy, if you want to find your power, you need to go down to your center and get it. So since kiaing was one of my favorite things, when I built my fitness, martial arts empowerment program, I thought I'll add kiaing as a component, I'll teach others. And my first class, the hip hop music is playing, I was in a gym, imagine um, cardio kickboxing with real martial arts movements, maybe cardio karate. And I said, okay, let's try a key eye. Seven, eight, nine, shout. Crickets. And I turn around and my class is saying, what? And some of the women are giggling. You want me to what? And some of the men, I had a few intrepid men, kind of grunted. <laughs> and some of the women threw that 10th punch. And then they dropped both their arms and they looked at me puzzled and they went, ah! And they yelled at me. And I had to say, no, no, the shout and the punch go together. <laughs> but it was really my responsibility because I hadn't explained adequately. I hadn't taught. And it's the why before the how that matters most with a key eye. Why are we doing this? To get a little extra energy and power. And I got better at teaching. Uh, and I began cueing more regularly. I got it down to just a second or two. And even then, even when I was doing it regularly for every class, I still had some people that wouldn't try. And I understood, I understand. If you think about it, it's actually very hard to be loud as an adult. Even in a, a corporate fitness setting, it's, it's professionally frowned upon. And the two tenets of the program that we built are, we occupy space and we make noise. We do sliding side kicks, walking front kicks, occasionally we key eye. And those two goals, occupy space, make noise, they are very challenging for a lot of adults, particularly some women. Women like to be right here. I wasn't always this connected to my energy and my power. I took the long road. I agonized over every mistake when I was younger, let it sink into my marrow, until I finally figured out that they don't matter so much. That's the harder path. I'll tell you one quick story to illustrate. I was about 25 or 26 or so, a newly minted attorney. And one of the senior lawyers in the office had a live TV interview that he couldn't do because he had to go to a meeting. And I said, oh, pick me. I got this. Live TV. How hard could that be? So by the time I was perched awkwardly on this little wooden stool and I was sitting on my jacket the way they told me, and I'd gotten the lecture about the red light on the camera and smile and blink and don't touch your earpiece, I was nervous. I was so nervous. I was shaking violently like I had never experienced before. It was like I was having some sort of medical emergency. And I was so angry with myself, I tried to put my hands behind my back, but my arms were shaking. And finally, this grizzled producer took pity on me. And he came over to me with a big mug of water, and he said, here, squeeze this. Sip the water. Keep it down in your lap. We'll do a tight shot. You'll be fine. And I said, OK, and I grabbed the cup. What happens when you give someone who has the shakes a cup of water? <laughs> yes, I threw it in my face. And then I looked away, and I threw it all over my shirt. And I looked at this man like, help me. <laughs> he had to literally wrench this mug out of my hands. And we looked at each other, incredulous. And I was all wet, and he was cursing. <laughs> and if I, if I think about it, if I look back now, I can see young Nicole. Somebody went and got paper towels. And I can see her drawing her face, her shirt, right, stuffing her bra. I can hear her. 
I can hear her apologizing endlessly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. Why is she apologizing to this man? For wasting his water? <laughs> I can feel her. I can feel her embarrassment. She's a colossal failure. Just ask her. Where was her power? If it's in me, and it is, then it was in her 20 years ago. It is in all of us. We just don't always know how to find it, right? Like Dorothy, we've got the shoes on. We just don't know how to click the heels. And I think that's why I enjoy key eyeing so much, because a key eye is like a regular reminder that when you say, oh, pick me, I got this. You mean, no, no, really, you see this? I got this. And so my challenge for you today is for you to go home and try to find your key eye. And the how is simple. The mechanics punch a heavy bag nine times, and on the 10th, while you punch, try to get a sound out. Or you can do it in front of a mirror. If you don't want to punch, kick. If you don't want to kick, try driving your knee up. And I've got a few do's and don'ts to help you on your journey. So do. Do be loud. Be loud! It's fun. There's no such thing as a quiet key eye. Hiya. No. <laughs> do. Clear your mind. Be relaxed when you try it. Breathe from your belly. It's not here. It's here. <sighs> do. This is very difficult for people, and it's really important. Make any sound you feel. My key eye is a ha. I say it every time. Ha! My sensei says, ay. <laughs> Traditionally, most people say, aya or haya. And my oldest daughter says, hep. <laughs> and I think if she gets more relaxed, that's going to become, hey. We have a guy who regularly says, sha. Every time, sha. Your sound is yours. Whatever comes out of you is OK. And in the beginning, you will probably grunt. I've had some people say, I threw 10 punches and I said nothing. I don't have one. Yes, you have one. We all have one. Most people grunt in the beginning. And they come back and they say, I used to say, ooh. But now it's more like, yeah. Yeah. It's a process. As you get less self-conscious and more relaxed, you'll find that your sound changes. That's OK. I only have one don't. Don't get angry. Don't get tight. Don't imagine that guy you can't stand, that woman from the budget office. Don't punch him like one of those old robot toys. Drawing your power from anger is, is limiting in every way. Remember the kanji, ki means energy. This is positive energy. You want to breathe out. My sensei always says, it's spiritual, it's intellectual, it's physical. It's not emotional. Just relax. My students from my first class, the ones who giggled and grunted and ah, yelled at me, they're awesome now. They back me up sometimes. They're so scary. <laughs> if you do need a visual, I'd like you to imagine a match or a spark suddenly bursting into flame. OK, before I go, I'll show you mine. I'll try to be loud so you can hear me. Ready? Seven, eight, nine. Ha! Your turn. Thank you.